About 40 to 50% of the mass of a typical biological membrane is made up of proteins that are physically associated with the membrane. Proteins associate with the membrane in three ways. In integral membrane proteins, one or more regions of the polypeptide chain are embedded in the lipid bilayer, making contact with the hydrophobic interior of the membrane. Most commonly, the polypeptide chain of an integral membrane protein completely crosses the membrane at least once, such that part of the protein is exposed to the aqueous compartment on one side of the membrane, and another part is exposed to the other side of the membrane. This kind of protein is called a transmembrane protein. A small number of integral membrane proteins are embedded in the membrane, but don't cross all the way to the other side. Peripheral membrane proteins are not embedded in the bilayer, but associate with the hydrophilic head groups of lipids or with integral membrane proteins. Note that the polypeptide chain of peripheral membrane proteins does not contact the hydrophobic interior of the membrane. And finally, lipid-linked membrane proteins have a covalently attached lipid molecule that is embedded in the bilayer. The polypeptide chain itself may or may not enter the interior of the membrane. In the example shown here, the polypeptide chain is not exposed to the hydrophobic part of the membrane. During protein purification procedures, integral membrane proteins and lipid-linked proteins cannot be removed from the membrane without disrupting the membrane. When purifying such proteins, you normally add detergents to the sample. Detergents are small amphipathic molecules that disrupt the membrane and coat the hydrophobic parts of the protein to keep them stable. In contrast, peripheral membrane proteins can often be removed from the membrane without disrupting the structure of the membrane and without detergents. Because of this, integral membrane proteins are generally harder to study than peripheral or water-soluble proteins. Like lipid molecules, membrane proteins are generally not fixed in one location in the membrane, but can diffuse laterally in the plane of the bilayer. Because lipid and protein molecules can move around in the bilayer, membranes are said to have a fluid mosaic structure. However, note that proteins do not flip from one side of the membrane to the other, uh, or turn upside down. The same part of the protein is always on one side of the membrane. In this figure 8.12, we are looking down at the surface of the membrane. And sometimes proteins, like protein A here, are fixed in position uh, by association with cytoskeletal or other proteins. Cytoskeletal proteins might also restrict movement of membrane proteins within a certain area, like protein B here. Now I just want to say a few words about the structure of transmembrane segments of proteins. Usually, proteins span the membrane using the alpha helical secondary structure. Remember that in an alpha helix, the polar groups of the backbone make hydrogen bonds with each other, shown in green here. This arrangement is particularly stable in the hydrophobic interior of the membrane because there are no other hydrogen bonding groups to bond to. In an alpha helix, the side chains stick out from the center of the helix and are exposed to the surroundings. So, in a transmembrane alpha helix, you would expect to see a bunch of hydrophobic side chains all in a row. It takes about 20 amino acid residues to cross a typical membrane, and you can often predict transmembrane segments in a protein by looking for a series of 20 or more consecutive hydrophobic residues. In many proteins, transmembrane alpha helices cluster together. The interior of such clusters uh, where the alpha helices meet can be hydrophilic, but the outsides of the clusters, the parts exposed to the hydrophobic core of the bilayer, will have hydrophobic side chains. More rarely, beta strands come together to make beta barrel structures that cross the membrane. You need a closed barrel structure to cross the membrane to satisfy the hydrogen bonding requirements of the backbone. The side chains of the beta strands will be arranged such that hydrophobic side chains face the lipids, while the inside of the beta barrel might be hydrophilic. In the next video, I'll talk about some functions of membrane proteins.